In these problems, we're dealing with uh, isometries, with transformations, but we're dealing with more than one. Uh, so we call these compositions of transformations, just when you add uh, more than one transformation on top of another. It can get a little bit complicated, but if we take it a step at a time, I'm sure it'll make sense to you. This first one says, name the translation image of triangle XYZ. So we're starting with this guy, triangle XYZ after a reflection in line R, so that's this right here, and then a reflection in line T. So that's this one here. So we're going to reflect it over this one, it's going to end up somewhere in here, and then we're going to reflect it over this one, so it's going to end up somewhere in there. So the question is, which triangle does XYZ become when we reflect it over line R? Well, we've really got two choices. It could be OPQ or it could be this uh, LMN. And I hope you can see that it's going to be LMN because when something gets reflected, the orientation changes, you get a mirror image. Uh, this OPQ would be if you just slid it across. When we reflect it across, we get this mirror image of LMN. So that's our first reflection. And then we're going to reflect it again. And what happens when you reflect it again is, is the orientation changes back to the way it was originally. So we're going to end up with DEF. So when they set up here, name the translation image, it's because two reflections over parallel lines, it sort of amounts to a translation. You're just taking this thing and sliding it across. It, it amounts to the same thing, even though we did two reflections. So correct answer here would be triangle DEF. All right, let's look at this next one. It says, which type of isometry is the equivalent of two reflections across intersecting lines? So. Let's take a look at that. Um, I, I'm going to draw a picture just to help myself visualize it. So here's a line, here's a line. I'm going to intersect them at 90 degree angles. I guess you wouldn't have to, but I'll just pick that. And we're going to start with a figure. I'll put it in the first quadrant here. And when I'm doing uh, reflections, I usually like to choose a, a figure like the letter L or the letter P that shows an orientation. I'm going to choose the letter L here. So here's my letter L. And we want to do two reflections across intersecting lines. So I'm going to reflect it across this line first, and then I'm going to re reflect it across this line. When I reflect it across this line, I get like that, mirror image. And then when I reflect it across this line, I get a mirror image of that. So the question is, what um, does that look like to you? Well, if you were to rotate this thing around the origin, let's take a look at what that would do. So if I rotate it at 90 degrees, I'd have my um, short part of the L down here, so it looked like that. And if I rotated another 90 degrees, the short part of the L would be pointing out that way. So it would actually be the same figure. So rotating something across, um, or reflecting something across intersecting lines ends up being the same thing as a rotation. Another way, if that didn't seem intuitive to you, another way to get, a, get towards that is to, by product of elimination here, um, a single reflection couldn't give you that orientation change. It would just be a mirror image of itself uh, rather than what we get over here. So single reflection is out. Dilation changes the size of something, and we're not doing that. And a glide reflection, again, a, it involves only a single reflection. It can't give you this orientation change, only a rotation could do that. All right, let's look at one more. It says, which type of isometry is the equivalent of three reflections across two parallel lines and another line perpendicular to them? So let's do this. Here's a parallel line, here's a parallel line, and then here's a line perpendicular, okay? And we'll start, I'm going to start with an L again. So we want reflections across two parallel lines and another perpendicular. So first I'm going to reflect it across this one. Boom, there we go. Then I'm going to reflect it across this one. Boom, there we go. Remember, you end up, after two reflections, getting the original orientation of the figure. Then we're going to reflect it across this one, and we get something like that. Now, how could we go from here to here is the question. Well, in this case, what we have, this original figure, the orientation, it's really just the mirror image of it, because this has the same orientation as our original figure. So all I've really done is send it over here with a translation, and then reflect it. That is the same thing as a glide reflection.
and that's going to be our correct answer here. So that is a little bit of work with compositions of transformations.